So I'd like to welcome uh, Anand on stage, um, also known uh, known as AB. Yeah. Uh, he is a long-time FSF uh, contributor, free software contributor. He's contributed to Gluster FS, GNU Free IPMI, and GNU Free Talk. His most recent project is an S3 object storage using Go, S3 based. Uh, he is also on the board of the Free Software Foundation of India, and he is an investor and advisor to Nexus Venture Partners and a few other startups. So, welcome and over to you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, this is a really a small talk. The name Minio stands for minimalism, so I use that for making slides too. Right. Um, in case. Any of you recognize this logo, right? This logo on the left side, right? You, you think you do, but you really don't, right? Just watch carefully, right? That's the right one, right? <coughs> but this is what, I, if you look at that, then it looks like Minio does not love Go. Yeah, there's a problem, <laughs> right? But I'm like, is this our logo? I can't change my logo. Then I did this, and then my wife pointed out, that's not Minio loves Go, uh, that's Go loves Minio. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds really arrogant. And then what should I do? Then I should talk to my legal counsel, and, and the obvious answer is uh, going to be no, you cannot change your logo. But then if you keep worrying about these things, right? the rule, rules are, are, are made, and you just follow, and if you keep just worrying about that, you really don't do anything useful. Right? Just be practical, change it. And then that's, that's what you saw in the beginning. It doesn't matter, you recognize, it, it does the job, right? That's what, that's what a logo is supposed to do. Uh, Brad, excuse me, I also took the liberty of making Go look that way. <laughs> okay, you can see, right? That, that's why uh, when we looked at Go, it was a cultural fit. It's like, no shit, it's, Go is about being practical. It's more than Go routines, channels, all the, all the bells and whistles. It's not about that. It's about being practical. It's opinionated, and it's opinionated for all the right reasons. And uh, Go was like a perfect fit. And Minio, for us more than code, Minio is a project about minimalist, right? Enterprise software, people always thought like enterprise. For us, we did not even know what enterprise. When we built Gluster before, they said, do you store enterprise data? I'm like, what is enterprise? Then they said, it's like a SQL Server, Exchange, and uh, like uh, DB2. And we wrote a server that runs in user space like an FTP, and we did not even know. I have not seen, an, uh, I have not seen a fiber channel switch myself, right, back when I wrote uh, Gluster. So it's, it's about doing something that just works, and it solves problem. A server that stores data, that's all it is, right? An object storage server, um, it's all about, it's a, it's a web server. And in fact, much of the work was done by Brad sitting here, right? And uh, it Go already has a nice web server, and all we needed to do is stick in some REST APIs that is compatible with Amazon S3, and here you go. Now you have Amazon S3 compatible object storage. And that's what Minio is about. And <coughs> the goal of the project is to build something so simple that you need no brocade and EMC certification. Uh, you're just an average JavaScript developer. You, you learned JavaScript like two weeks before. You now know how to run Node.js, MongoDB. You should be able to run Minio along the side. Why would you do that? You have structured data sitting in a document store. You have Redis for caching, some key value data. When you have like blobs of information, like photos, log data, Anything that just keeps growing, machine images, like Docker container images, you need Amazon S3 server. But then there is no good open source Amazon S3 compatible server. So that's why we wrote Minio. Minio is a simple object, object storage server written in Go. And it's about doing simple things, minimal things. It's not about like a storage server that does like a, a, a large farm, it uses all these consensus protocol. It does um, like uh, compression, dedupe, encryption. It, uh, name it. Then we also support iSCSI. We also support uh, NFS. This is what all other storage startups was doing. And we wanted to make it so simple that someone has no idea of, uh, of storage 
just downloads a binary to the laptop, starts the server, now you got your own Amazon S3 open source alternative on your laptop. Right? So when, when we started the project, the very first prototype was actually not written in Go. <coughs> it, it was a little more than a year before. Right? I, the first prototype was actually written in C++ because the core package, the core, core functionality we wanted to use erasure coding. It's, a, it's an algorithm where you can take your data and split it into parts. Say if you have, uh, say, eight megabytes of data. You take your data, you split it into eight parts. Now you, you say you also add parity blocks. So another eight blocks. Now I got 16 blocks. Now I can scatter them, lose any parts. I can still get my data back. One of the core functionality to manage this data was all written in assembly. And naturally, I picked C++, and the idea was we could write much of the object storage in JavaScript. JavaScript reached a stage where it was, uh, it, the performance was pretty good, and uh, V8 was portable. Um, so uh, we, I also looked at SpiderMonkey. Both, uh, both of them are JavaScript runtimes, and uh, they, are they are pluggable into your application using the C++ APIs. It was uh, portable. They were available on... Um, desktop operating systems to even the server side, like Linux operating systems. Um, we, we, wrote, we, we wrote bulk of the code as a prototype, of course. And very soon you realize your, your, your object storage is simply a web server. It's, it, 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 the overall system looks like here is Node.js for, for storage. The core is, is a JavaScript runtime with all the storage APIs, all the primitives you need to build a, build a storage server. It is equivalent of a Node.js for storage. Now you can start writing powerful storage applications all in JavaScript. That's what we thought. And you realize that JavaScript runtime is so complicated. Anytime, even if you do throw in all kinds of complex functionalities, your JavaScript runtime is going to be complicated. Anything that is complicated and then you build simple things on top, it still falls apart. Right? So we ditched that simply because JavaScript runtime had so much baggage. And it's the same for any JavaScript runtime. Then the second prototype was written in Go, and it very quickly became clear that there is hardly anything. It, in fact, it was more portable than a V8-based JavaScript code base. Because like, <coughs> even very early on, the code was, uh, was, we were able to just get the code working on um, ARM platform. Um, why would you do that? Like, it ran on Raspberry. But the real reason we wanted that was uh, there is a new breed of disk drives coming into the market where the drives has, uh, they have ARM chip in it, and it runs embedded Linux in it. You can run Minio on the disk, and now each disk appears as if it's Amazon S3 cloud storage. Right? And it's, it is an ARM 32-bit chip. Uh, now think about porting your V8 runtime. Uh, of course, it, it, V8 and others are, are, are pretty portable. But still, for me, having that much of code baggage, portability is a real problem, right? Now, I, I, I was able to just get the prototype easily get co uh, compiled on ARM or Linux. Everything was good to go. So pretty much we, we, from that point onwards, we, we, uh, we, uh, we were sticking to go, and it was the best choice. There were other choices that we looked at. I, the one that, that C and Guile, Guile is a scheme, uh, embeddable scheme interpreter. That's, that has always been my uh, favorite combination. It gave you the, uh, all the performance of C, and then uh, you are now able to extend your application in Scheme. The only problem I have with that is the Scheme Lisp community is very small, right? <coughs> we dropped that. When you pick a language, your, your language influences the community you build, and it, it, it was obviously a poor choice to pick Lisp, even though we love Lisp. I would have picked Haskell if Minio was a hosted service and we manage all the code. Um, I, would have, I, I would have loved Haskell for, uh, for being a pure functional language, but that our intention is not to build a cloud storage service, just build simple free software and make application developers use it. Right? So Haskell is a poor choice, and uh, I won't go into the rest of the details, uh, but they are pretty obvious and boring too. So <coughs> uh, demo time. 
You just download the binary. It's not the whole URL. So you go to minio.io, you will get the URL. <coughs> just download the binary, uh, chmod, and then uh, you can start the server. It's, uh, it's a simple command. Before I go there, uh, minio server, and then you point uh, your data directory. It could be just your uh, work folder, my documents, anything. And the server starts, and it shows you me a message with the access key and secret key, and it tells you how to use it. That's pretty much it. For the most part, if you are an application developer, you're going to start on your laptop, and you just want Node.js, MongoDB, Minio, you got a complete local cloud, and you start building your application. Now you deploy it on the cloud, like DigitalOcean, Rackspace, pick any cloud. If you go to Amazon S3, Amazon AWS, you already have Amazon S3. Right, so if you go if you go anywhere else, Minio goes along with your application stack. So if you go to DigitalOcean, you don't ask them give me this many Node.js instance, this many MySQL, MySQL instance. You ask them give me CPU, network, disk, and an SSH access. Right, that's all it is. Your application stack includes MongoDB, Minio, everything you want. Now you go deploy there. You can pick any cloud provider, and you are now free. Right, that's the idea behind Minio. Just Keep it simple, liberate the free, the idea of free software is that now they have a choice. I'll, I'll show you a real demo, let me switch back. There. If you want, I can kill it. Demo always fails, so it's already running. Uh, I can just show demo on this server, but let's do it anyway, right? It's written in Go, it should work. I have Brad here, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's clear everything. So all I'm doing is, uh, let, let's see, even let me cancel this. It's a folder, right? Oh, there, is, there are two folders. So it, it's a folder with uh, some data. Ignore the dollar. They are just my private uh, content. So all I did was Minio, server, um, and work. It has other commands like update. If you want to, if if, if there are new releases available on uh, on our server, minio update command will tell you there is a new binary you can go download it. Uh, things like that. Uh, and then minio config allows you to just add some config uh, config parameters. But it's the pretty much this is the command you want to type. When you type, you you see access key, secret key, and uh, you can you can ignore the region. If you are if you are accessing through the API, um, you uh, you can fill in the region or you can leave it empty, uh, AWS SDK, Minio SDK, there are plenty of choices. They know how to, uh, all you mainly need is the access key and secret key. Minio, while it generates this by default, you can just open the JSON config file and change it to just admin password, just for the demo purpose, right? You can just keep it a plain string too, it will work. Now, <coughs> the object storage server itself is, is running on port 9000. Uh, on two different interfaces. Well, if you have multiple interface, uh, multi interfaces, it runs on everything unless you specifically choose to bind to a particular IP address. And uh, one other thing we did was we embedded a file browser inside, inside the, uh, uh, inside the Go, Go binary itself. The interesting part of, uh, of that is it actually the, the file browser is written in React, React.js uh, by Facebook. We took that and, um, uh, and uh, embed, uh, you create an asset file, the finished part, you create an asset file, embed the binary data into a Go, Go program, and then now you can compile it into your binary. That is why when, uh, if you do LS, or if you try to download Minio binary, it looks like it's very big, and then everyone thinks, oh, I told you static binaries are big. It's not because of that, it is because we embed the web graphics. When you have all these font and graphics files and CSS files, of course, they, they blot up, right? Um, so that's. That's the big, uh, biggest chunk of the static binary. Um, now let's, go, uh, there is also a client. Uh, there is a client binary. I'll show, you, I'll show you a demo of the binary too. It's called MC. Um, even there, like some com old school guys obviously will crib about, you are stealing the name. There were, some guys got really upset at us. You, you are using the name MC, which is, uh, which is uh, another project. I, did not, I, I used MC. It's called Midnight Commander. And uh, he was complaining that we stole uh, their credibility, and they were famous, and we are trying to steal their branding. I did not even know that project was alive, uh, and it's actually alive too. Still, there are people using it, and there are releases. Even recently, there was a release. You're using it? Okay, good to know. Uh, uh, but my point was, look, 
I didn't say that. Uh, you, uh, I'm not saying it. You can close your ears for some time. M <laughs> MC is midnight commander. is a clone of Norton commander, which is a proprietary software. You did that to a, to a Norton commander, right? For us, the point was that look, the naming convention that your command has to be unique is an old, unique, stupid idea. Right? When you did the packaging, they all have to sit in the bin folder. But when it's a Go binary, copy it anywhere. You do dot slash, keep it in a custom path. Most users today do not run these tools installed by root. They just have their own custom folder. That's how you even have your Go runtime running. Right? So it, it, it ha not ma having to manage deb RPM packages was a big deal for us. Otherwise, now you have to be nice to those communities. You need to have package manager. And then you, they accept your package. You feel so good. It's completely pointless. Right? Just have a binary. Don't worry about naming convention. I could not find, I, I would not have taken MC. I'm sorry, I could not have taken MC, but I couldn't find a better name. Uh, there is a reason for why MC is small. Because MC is simply a prefix to a bunch of core utils commands. MC, LS, MC, CP, MC, uh, mirror. Uh, mirror is like rsync. There are a whole bunch of commands. Every time I cannot type some minio client or some object storage, and then LS. I wouldn't use LS then, right? So that, that's what happened. Anyway, so now, <coughs> so it also tells just download, do the same operation, download MC, uh, chmod, and now you got yourself a client. When we wrote the server, we originally thought we did not have to touch the SDK, um, the, the client SDK. Um, uh, Amazon already had nice libraries for multiple languages, and uh, application developers are using those libraries. In uh, the point, and they are they are Apache license, they are free software, right? Well, the point of free software is you don't duplicate. When, uh, when we looked into the code base, it was very poorly written. It was auto-generated code. There was no love in the code. For us, I, our idea of software is software has to be simple and beautiful. Why do you want? Uh, we could not possibly promote that library. And that we ended up writing SDK, uh, the, a, a client. Uh, a client for Amazon S3, as if there is no Minio server. So you have uh, client bindings for all the way from .NET, Python, um, uh, Go, obviously. Then, uh, then there are like uh, Node.js, uh, Java. Um, uh, there's a couple of couple more. <coughs> so the the client library looks like this. Not that. It's not the complete code. I wanted to increase font size, so uh, I took the liberty of removing all the error checks. So Minio uh, dot new creates a Minio client, right? It's a, it creates an S3 compatible client. All you need is uh, give the server name, access key, secret key, and the last one is uh, is, uh, is you want to enable TLS or not, like secure. Um, and then you open a file, you got the stream to that file, and then S3, S3 client dot put object uploads the file. In fact, if you look at the Amazon SDK, if you are uploading large files, you have to chunk it up as like multi-part upload, and uh, if what if some, someone has already uploaded? Then you need to do list, list multi-part, see if there is already some parts there, and you have to up upload missing parts. There is also an upload manager that they have written as, as additional layer, but my point was, it is a simp the API should be simple. All you need is get put list, and put should automatically take care of small file or large file. It should not look any more complicated than, than this API, right? So we wrote this API for multiple languages, and then we wrote the client. I will show you a demo of the client too, uh, but before that, we can go to the browser. I told you about the React.js. I can log out and... It is working right now. Again, let, let's log out and try if it really works. Right. I just saved the password. If you, if the server is running on, so the server is running on local host 9000. If you are running it on DigitalOcean or any server, you have the public IP address. Now you can share it with your friends or even from your mobile browser. You can now access uh, through the web-based file manager. So you can just go through the directories and see the contents. Just navigate. It's, it looks like a file browser, but the under, underlying API is Amazon S3, uh, AP, S3 compatible API. It's V4 signature. If you point your SDK 
to this um, I, this IP address, you will be able to talk to that server as if it's exactly Amazon S3 service. We are pretty much done. I can quickly show you the commands. Also, so let's see. So if you see the MC, MC has a command and it takes flag and it has a whole bunch of commands, right? Like ls, mb, mb should have been mkdir, but now on, uh, from Amazon's context, they call it make bucket. Bucket is a top level folder, but don't treat it like a folder. Um, buckets are kind of expensive resource on Amazon S3. You are, I think, limited to up to 100, 100 buckets per user. Um, it, it, it's a flat, it's a, it's a directory, and you just dump all the files into that directory. Don't create subdirectories. There is no subdirectory. It's a flat namespace. That is what Amazon S3 is, right? So we didn't want to call it mkdir because it would, uh, it, it would change the behavior of the user. They would think it's just directory, and they would try to create a lot of it on Amazon. Just uh, make them responsible, show them that this is not mkdir. So we call it mb. But mb works like mkdir if you create if you create a directory on your local file system. All of these commands works on a POSIX file system. Could be NFS, Gluster, any fi any local file system, and the same commands, same syntax works on S3 compatible storage, even Google Cloud storage. <coughs> so the the commands like the like cat um, cat you can directly cat an object on on your cloud storage uh, to STD out pipe is like the Unix pipe. It's uh, particularly useful if you are doing a database backup, like MySQL dump pipe, and then uh, it, it, takes it, it takes it there. Share is, a, is again, a com it's an API, Amazon, it's built around Amazon S3 API. So if you have an object sitting on your bucket, now you want to give access to that object to an application or to some, some of your friends, uh, you can now share that object without giving them access to this file browser or even access key secret key, it generates a unique URL which is pre-signed. It has all the credentials built into the API. And you can, it generates a URL. You can even tell this user, uh, the, it, this, this user can only upload certain types through this URL, certain types of cer and certain file sizes, or if they're downloading, say this URL will expire in seven days or two days or even 10 seconds, right? Why would you do that? But it's possible. <coughs> there are, uh, there are, mirror is an interesting command. Uh, it's like rsync. Um, it, uh, it, we just called it mirror because it's more, uh, if you did not know what rsync is, you will, you can still understand what mirror is, right? Um, <coughs> mirror diff ac access is to tell that I want this bucket to be public or uh, public uh, or, or private or you need authentication, things like that. Um, the, the, the CP mirror, some of these commands, right? The point of writing these tools, so you have a choice. Either we can write a S3 mountable file system, a fuse file system. There is one already. Either we can do that and then make the Unix, the GNU core utils work on top of Amazon S3. The point was we have done that before. That's what we did in Gluster, right? To build a very large namespace. We have done that a lot, a lot of times, but, the, but we learned the hard way that even if you do all that, the, to make the GNU core utils or the Unix core utils work, uh, the point is that the core utils suck. What is the point of making core utils work? Core utils don't work even for a 4TB type disk, like local disk. I'm copying some Unicode character, something crapped out. I came back after next day, and it's telling that uh, the CP failed, some IO error. If I restart, it starts from beginning all over. It has all these commands, has a whole bunch of options that no one knows why they exist. Right, and remove all that and do things that actually matter, right? Like if I'm copying, if it fails, tell, tell me that I can continue from where it left off. Tell me, show me a progress bar. Show, tell me how long I can, uh, how long it's going to complete. And the same CP, LS, all these commands not only works for POSIX, it works for S3 compatible object storage as well. So, the, that, so and it scales for very large data centers. You want to even manage petabytes of data, so you clearly cannot rely on fuse and uh, core Unix core utils. That was the reason to actually implement MC. On my laptop, I already replaced, um, replaced the standard core utils with just alias to it. LS is MCLS, CP is MCCP, you know, things like that. Uh, MC, for example, let's see. So, <coughs> um, 
L, the local is, a, is an alias. I can show you how to go to. Yes, local. Local host, access key, secret key. I've already mapped it. And now my lo any, any S3 resource, S3 compatible resource, can be mapped with access key, secret key like this. And that name you gave is an alias. So if I, now LS works on that, right? You can see LS is actually MCLS. Now, <coughs> Dash R, it shows recursively. The, even if you look at the output, what's the point of showing all the bytes, number of bytes, and you have to explicitly say human readable, and I, do, I can't even remember what that option is. Maybe we dash ke, uh, uppercase H or something, right? What's the point of showing lots of information? Even, like, it won't show in color you have, unless you explicitly say dash dash, like, like you have to I, I don't remember the option again. You have to explicitly enable color. Be sensible, show output that makes sense, and don't show output that does not make sense, right? So we removed a whole bunch of options and only retained say, so every, every command you type, basically there are only few options um, and examples, and that's all you need to remember to manage a whole bunch of data. There are some interesting options too. I think it scrolled too quickly. If you do debug, you can even do the trace. You can actually see what's going on, actual post calls. Um, it's a standard HTTP trace. Um, you can see what is going on, and you can debug your applications too. Um, and there are even commands like, The dash dash JSON output produces a parsable output, so we can now do scripting automation. If you are a DevOps guy, you do not want to use all the SDKs and write powerful applications. Here is a higher level command. You used to do this by hand. You just want to automate it. Use dash dash JSON and just script it script around it. So pretty much the commands are are self-explanatory. MC MB. If you type the command, it shows you the examples, and then you just you just use it. This is pretty much it. I, let's see if there are any slides left. Questions? So there is a Gitter channel. Um, there are questions already. So there is a Gitter channel we hang out. Um, uh, Gitter is like a free node IRC. Uh, there is also at Minio Twitter handle. Um, uh, and uh, even when you are sending us pull requests, if you when you join the project, what would be more appreciated is you are sending code to remove stuff. Whatever looks ugly, if you remove that, you will be more appreciated than you are adding a new feature. Uh, particularly if you are adding a new flag, new option, I would prefer you to add, focus on removing than adding. Right. Okay, great. This is all it is. I'll start taking questions. Um, so. Uh, there are so many hands, I don't know who raised first, but let's go one by one. Okay, the MC, so because I owe you one, right? Midnight Commander, I will start with you. <laughs> there, Mike, hello. I'll ask her. Okay, we, uh, you will go next, okay. So, sure. As per your demo, I saw that uh, the server works on HTTP. Uh, do you have any other protocol like TCP or UDP or anything? Because a HTTP seems like an overhead protocol. You, you mean HTTP For overhead? Content. Yeah, I mean, HTTP has overhead of, I mean, adding headers and all those things above TCP. Sure. So do you have any support for other protocols for transferring data? Uh, the answer is no. It is, if you, if you looked at other object storage systems, they actually ended up doing that. They even had a raw TCP connection. Uh, the, for me, the reason to avoid that, 
uh, other than being dictated by minimalism, there, there, there is really no good reason. If you are talking about a database content where key and value, you're talking about data sets that are smaller than 4KB, it it, the, your HTTP header is blotting everything, right? In an object storage, you would not store such content. You are talking about a, an object on, on average, these are like say photo, photo is four meg, eight meg, high definition photo, video, and object storage allows you to scale all the way up to five TB object. And your HTTP header is, is minuscule. And HTTP is today seen as the TCP IP of the internet. And big applications are built on that. And once you establish as a stream, you, you connect it and you keep sending the data, that overhead is marginal compared to the internet latency. Um, so there is really no good reason to add. Thank you. Yeah, your project looks pretty good. I'm definitely going to use it. Was there any specific reason why you didn't uh, decide, uh, you, why didn't you submit to Debian for a package, like so, I could do sudo apt-get install min.io. Uh, it is a binary. It's a. It's it's just a sa static binary. You can copy it to anywhere. If you really want to do a dip package, the only reason to do that is uh, is uh, you do uh, in the in the post install you do chmod plus x, right? Uh, but it's just a binary. You copy it anywhere. Uh, no, actually, huh. there's there's a lot of benefits to that. So I like uh, like when I'm installing software on my system, I trust the Debian maintainers for that. So I get uh, when I'm pitching uh, Minio to someone uh, above my chain, I can mm -hmm. say that because it, it is trusted by the Debian community, it'll be a, a reliable thing. It'll, it won't do anything evil per se. Like it yeah. So whenever I install a server, I can just do uh, in my uh, install script. I can add uh, at the end add to install Minio like after something like Emacs or something. Yeah. So uh, which one would you trust? A binary from Go or a Go get like from a GitHub? Like we have source. Uh, and uh, or even if you pull the binary from dl.minio.io, uh, they are GPG uh, sig uh, si like signature signed, and you can verify that it actually came from us. And if, if, if would you trust a Debian package maintainer, or would you trust the guys who wrote the code signed it digitally? Okay, so I have the perfect example for you. Okay. Uh, so recently, about a few months ago, mm -hmm. the Chromium project, which is an open source project, you can download the code and read it easily. Mm -hmm. the Debian maintainer found that they were downloading a blob of binary data that was opening the microphone whenever the Chromium was launched. Mm -hmm. So I trusted the Debian maintainer and he told on the mailing list that this is something that Chromium is doing. Please, if you not if you don't trust them, remove it because uh, there's something weird going on there. Okay. Later, the team clarified that it was something else, but okay. the Debian maintainer was not there. I wouldn't have known that my microphone was being listened to whenever I launched Chromium. So I trust Got the Debian maintainers more than anything else. Yeah, so uh, the, the, those maintainers are good. They follow security channels. Uh, it, it is also a responsibility of our project, but they take the responsibility of declaring what is stable. Nice part about Go is Go does not prevent them from doing their job. If, if it, either it is a Debian package maintainer, or it could be even a consulting firm who, who is better equipped about security, or it could be Red Hat packaging us into their operating system. Um, it, nice thing is Go does not prevent it, and we don't prevent it. It's just that if you do not want to go th through that route, you want to do Go get or you want to get a binary, it's simpler. But yes, it, the, it, if at this stage, we are too small. We are just one year old, right? It would be really hard for us to convince a Debian maintainer, and there is a proper voting system. It would take time. I think eventually it will happen. So I would like to contribute that. So I, I would love. I would love that. Yes. On Thank GitHub, you. Probably yeah. we'll yeah. make it on GitHub over. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. There. This. Hi. Uh, nice uh, talk. Uh, Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that uh, file manager. Uh, Library. So, what was that again? Uh, the file browser. Uh, mid <laughs> midnight Commander. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, the client side or the browser? The React. Uh, React JS. J Re so, Re React JS uh, is uh, it's a framework to build. Actually, Krishna sitting there, he wrote it, uh, and then Rushan sitting there, he designed it. The UI. So, uh, so the the file browser uh, it, it, it's written in JavaScript and JavaScript. It's, it's uh, React JS is like Angular JS, I right? React JS. I right. Okay, right. Library on top of JS, right? Like file, uh, file uh, browser. Ah, so okay. So how is it implemented? I will tell you. Yeah. So uh, the client side is is pure is, is pure JavaScript. Uh, in fact, I did not want to include. Uh, there are some technical details. It's interesting to know because it's not just in the context of the file browser. It is useful 
if you are writing an Android iOS application or even a web application, um, the, how to go about doing this? Should you do, so there is a Node.js package for, uh, uh, Node.js client by mini or Node.js package, uh, which talks to Amazon S3 service. So should, should I use mini or Node.js package in combination with React.js on the client side browser? Uh, and my advice is I wouldn't do that. Even though it is, it is possible you can go about doing it, uh, I would not do that because you are now sending the access key secret key to the client side and client is now fully capable. It's particularly dangerous if you are writing Android iOS application. These, even, these jar files, when they have these secret key, access key embedded, someone can easily decode. Even if you, if you had tricky ways to hide it, if somewhere it is compromised, you have to now issue a new package up, update to all of your clients. So how do you solve this problem? It's not something uh, that it, we only face. Amazon already solved it. So that's what they, what they do is there is an API, the same, com the, the com MC share command uses that API. It's called pre-signing. So entire S3 client library is on the server side, right? So if you write application, in case of Minio uh, file browser, because server already has the capability, we did not actually have to include a client library inside the server. So server exposes extra, extra APIs specifically designed for the browser. It's more higher level API um, uh, and it does the job. But when you're writing an Android application, what you, what you would do is don't, uh, uh, don't put the S3 client, even in, independent of Minio, don't put the S3 client on the client side. Instead, you write the server, there is like a gateway, and the server would pre-sign any object you want the client to access. So when you pre-sign the URL, you can tell th I, I, this access is only restricted to four minutes or four days, and uh, even you can tell, say, if you want that application to upload to a particular, fo particular folder, you can precisely control it has to be of PNG type, and it, the size has to be this much. There is a whole bunch of restriction you can add on top. Um, uh, and uh, so what you do is always there is a server-side component so server side, now you can pick any language you want. Java, it could be uh, Node.js, it can be uh, Go, whatever, right? So now server side, you pre-sign it, and then send that URL alone to the client side, Android app, iOS, doesn't matter. And they, with that URL, any standard HTTP client library can access object storage. So that is the same thing. If you, if you see the file browser, and if you, uh, if you want to download, what it does is it, it server gives a pre-signed URL at that time, and you, it, it initiates a download. Second part question. So, you are the main sponsor for this conference, and you are an open source uh, project. So, I'm just trying to understand what's your motivation for you know, doing this. Uh, uh, what's the mot motivation for doing this? Yeah. Um, uh, for uh, doing Minio? Or no. For, for, sponsor for sponsoring? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 the, the, the real. <laughs> <laughs> Should I. <d> <laughs> It, it, uh, the, the, the real reason, uh, if you like, I, even like, just few minutes before Atul, uh, Atul is, uh, organizes everything. He's part of Minio team, right? He was like, we, we don't want to be announced. We don't want the booth. Um, it, 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 we are doing this because we, uh, it is our, we, it is our responsibility to give back. What we did is tiny compared to what the Golang community did to us. In fact, I told you, right, the hardest part is writing an efficient web server. If you wrote one to the specification, you will know re that's a really, really hard job. You will grow older implementing it to the specification. Someone already did the job. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, we have to just stick in some REST APIs on top and make it look cool and take the credit, right? So it is our responsibility to give back. And that is the main motivation uh, we are, we are uh, to, to sponsor. Thank you.